This is the Porsche 918 Spyder, and it's a little bit like the Holy Ghost. You see, it's part of the famous Holy Trinity. You had the father, the LaFerrari. You had the son, the McLaren P1. And then you had this, which was the hardest to define, hence the Holy Ghost. I mean, no one could ever explain to me what the Holy Ghost was. I got the father, it was God, and I got the fact that the son was Jesus, but... Anyway, enough about that. If you know, let me know in the comments below because I never understood it. Anyhow, in this video, I'm going to help you understand the 918 Spider, And of course, I'm going to take it for a drive and launch it to see how quick it is from 0 to 60 miles an hour. Because I'm Matt Watson and you're watching Car Wow. Buy, sell, car wow. Let's start off this video by talking about the power system. So the 918 Spider uses a 4.6 litre naturally aspirated V8 derived from the RS Spider Le Mans car. It can rev all the way up to 9,000 RPM and it's mated to an electric motor and drives the rear wheels via a seven speed dual clutch automatic gearbox. But then there's another electric motor on the front axle. So this is the only car out of the Holy Trinity to be four wheel drive. Your total power system output is 887 horsepower and 1,280 newton meters of torque. Top speed is 214 miles an hour, which is slightly less than the 270 miles an hour the McLaren P1 can do and the 280 miles an hour the Ferrari LaFerrari can do. As for the 0-60 time, well let's find out. Right, I'm going to launch this 918 Spider and use my specialist timing gear here to see how quick it is from 0 to 60 miles an hour. Let's do it. Oh, pretty quick. What's the time going to be? Come on, 0 to 60 in 5.78 seconds. That would be quicker. Oh, wait a minute. It's in electric only mode. That was it launching just with its electric motors, which is pretty impressive. I'm obviously gonna have to launch it as well with the internal combustion engine running, but I'll do that at the end of the video. So hold on for that. Now, if you like these kind of videos, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on. That way you won't miss a single upload. And you should see what I'm gonna be reviewing next. It will blow your mind. The 918 Spider has carbon ceramic brakes as standard. You've got 410 millimeter discs at front and 390 at the rear. Now let's check out their performance. Okay, let's do a brake test and see how long it takes this car to stop from 100 kilometers an hour, AKA 60 miles an hour. Here we go. Full emergency stop and that took 31 meters. It's good, not brilliant, but good. I think Porsche's got better at blending regen braking with braking. When you're braking hard in this car, you don't notice it, but slower speeds, yeah, the regen does feel a bit odd-ish. Why not complaint? Not bad for a car this age. The 918 Spider has a carbon fibre monocoque chassis. You've got double wishbone suspension at the front and multi-link at the rear. You've also got rear wheel steering and a limited slip differential on the rear axle. You've got adaptive suspension as standard and the car rides on Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tyres. Right, let's see what this 918 Spider is like to drive. I've been looking forward to this moment for ages. And tell you the truth, I'm not a fan of plug-in hybrids, but will I make an exception for this car? Yeah, <laughs> I'll let this one off. <laughs> Obviously plug-in hybrids, one of the downsides is the way. And this is not the lightest car, but by modern standards, it's actually not that heavy. 1,670 kilos. Also, plug-in hybrids also have this thing where the motors, the gearbox never quite sync up fully. In this though, They are working together in perfect harmony. And you know what? With most modern plug-in hybrids, you have a turbocharged engine rather than a naturally aspirated one. So what you get from this is wicked throttle response from a naturally aspirated engine combined with the amazing throttle response from two electric motors. And it's just, it's just instant. It feels like an electric car, but it doesn't run out of puff. It just builds in terms of the power, which electric cars don't. So you get that wicked pickup, then, it just keeps coming. And of course, the noise of that Natchi Aspirate V8, which revs up to 9,000. <laughs> oh my God. When you think about the performance and the price of this thing, it should be intimidating to drive, but the visibility is just so good. The low dash, the way the body just falls away, it's like an old fashioned 911. New 911s, the visibility is not as good, but old ones, it's like you sat on the road, this is the same. And the chassis is just so good. It's really stiff, this chassis. As a result, they haven't had to fear overly stiff suspension, and it just rides over bumps absolutely brilliantly. So when you're caning it, if you hit a bump mid-corner, you're not gonna go 
skipping off the road into a bush, which would be catastrophic in something worth this much. Oh, it's so good. So is the steering. It's an early electric power steering system, but it's bang on. The thing about this car though is that when you're not on it, it can be really civilized. So I'm going to go into electric only mode now. We're going to go silent. Well, apart from the whee, from the motors, I had a U-turn. I want to go back up that way. One of the great things is that, considering how old it is, it still came with four-wheel steering, and that means it's surprisingly manoeuvrable. Turning circle is 12.8 meters. Now I'm reversing up, and it's a bit hard to see in this camera because the light shines on it quite badly and it's low def. But I think I'm all right. And now I can just tootle about. Although the motors do make a bit of a whee noise. I quite like that as well. If you're on a daily drive, it you absolutely positively can do. It's comfy, quiet, chilled. The only thing is you won't be chilled when you realize that every mile that you put on this car, you're reducing the amount that it's going up in value. That really is a shame because a car like this just needs to be driven properly because it's so much fun. That's one of the things that when people invest in watches, they still wear their watches, but often with cars like this, they just mothball them, put them in a lockup and leave them there now, in an air-conditioned garage to accumulate in value and you're just missing out and i'm missing out by driving this on electric power even though it'll do like over 90 miles an hour i'm going to whip it in to race mode and what's going to happen is going to go full attack in the suspension you know the wing popping up to its maximum angle for downforce i'm going to go into manual mode again oh listen to that v8 Oh, it's so seamless, the power delivery. Oh, the gearbox, PDK gearbox for the wind. Bang, 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 bang. It just smashes home the ratios. This is absolutely awesome. In fact, it's electric. But you had no idea who that was supposed to be. Let me know in the comments below if you recognise who I was trying to impersonate. I'll stick to reviewing cars. I'll stick to driving this, actually. I can't believe it's a 10-year-old car. It doesn't feel like it. It feels brand new. I'm in absolute awe of this. I've driven a LaFerrari. I prefer this. I haven't driven the P1 yet, though. Go to the P1. But so far at the Holy Trinity, this is my favourite. The 918 Spider is a really beautiful and simplistic looking car. Every single vent does something. There's no fakery here. Moving down the side, you have 20 inch alloy wheels at the front, 21s at the rear, center locking nuts. You've got the high vis luminous yellowy green to signify it's an E hybrid. There's these vents here that release pressure from the wheel arches. Obviously these vents here allow air into the radiators to cool the engine. You've got high mounted exhaust pipes there as well. Moving to the rear, yeah it looks lovely from this angle as well. A diffuser and this rear wing which alters its position depending on which driving mode you go in for more downforce to push the rear axle into the ground. And there's some interesting features like this lap here which you can open to get inside the oil filler. I think I'll keep that and sell it on eBay. I need some money. Actually, if you need to make some money and you need to sell your car, click on the pop-out banner up there. I'll find the link in the description below to get a car wow. All you have to do is upload some photos, then our dealers will bid on your car. And you can take the highest offer, they'll come to your house, take away the car and put the money straight in the account. It's completely free and there's no obligation to sell. It's actually really hot because I've been driving the car. I'll put it back. I just love the interior design of the 918 Spider. It just looks so cool. I like the center console with the climate control buttons, which makes it easy to use. Infotainment system here. It does feel a little bit dated. Now there's no Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, but that's fine. Build quality, everything you touch and use feels suitably expensive. Apart from one thing, the cup holder. <laughs> it's not really becoming of a car of this price. Though it does have a bit of a heft to it, but still. Surely there's a better solution than that. There is decent-ish storage for a hypercar. So you've got some storage there and a little bit under here. And there is a glove box. There we go, which is filled up by this thing here. Is this a special container for your gloves? Quite like that, actually. Nice. The seats, common fiber buckets. And then there's the dials, which are just so clear and easy to read. Also like the steering wheel as well. Really nice. Now, if you want to see how this interior compares to that of the Ferrari LaFerrari, click on the pop-out banner up there or follow the link in the description below. The 918 Spider isn't the most practical car in the world. It's not too bad for a hypercar. You've got this front boot that has a capacity of 110 litres. Though a 911 has a bit more space. Obviously, you can fold down the back seats of a 911 and use that for storage. And a 911's front boot is 132 litres if you go for the rear-wheel drive model. That brings up to five annoying things about the 918 Spider. When you go into race mode, the spoiler extends up and it ends up blocking your view at the back window. Mind you, you're going to be in front of everyone, so you don't need to see behind you. 
while you can adjust the steering wheel in and out, you can't move it up or down. Huh? Also, the seat, while you can move it forwards and backwards and up and down, you can't actually recline the backrest. Now I find it's a little bit too upright and it's making my shoulders a bit hunched. The bells, the bells, Esmeralda, the bells. Having a naturally aspirated V8 that revs all the way up to 9,000 RPM with exhaust mounted high up should be brilliant for just revving at a standstill to impress your mate. So let's rev it up and enjoy the experience. Go on, rev it. <laughs> Sounds pretty good, but is there a soft limiter? <laughs> Like there's a soft limiter. There is a bit of a cheat to work your way around that, the old launch control method. So go on, launch control cheat. <laughs> That's better, but still to have a soft limiter on a car like this, a bit of a shame. Because it's a plug-in hybrid, this car has an impressive claimed 94 miles per gallon capability. Now that may be the case if you drive it really slowly and plug in constantly, but over the past 210 kilometers, this car has actually averaged 15.7 litres per 100 kilometers, which works out to 18 miles per gallon. That is the world's biggest horsefly. Look at the size of that bugger. Wish I'd killed it. This is the 918 Spider, which means it's a convertible, though it's not the easiest roof to take down. So. We're going to go through a process of, first of all, opening the frunk. Let's get that open. There's a lever in there somewhere. There we go. I have to detach the roof panels. There's two of them. Press and pull, I think. Oh. Okay, that's that. Let's do the other side. Press and pull. Double Right, oh, here we go. Now, apparently these fit in the front some, somehow, I'm assured. Uh, bear with me. Yeah, it's not the easiest process. The convertible roof on a 911 is easier than this. But maybe it's just because I'm an idiot. I'll leave it like that. Not all bad though. Here's five cool things about this car. For instance, at the Holy Trinity, only this and the McLaren P1 could drive on electric power alone, but the McLaren could only do seven miles on a charge, whereas this could do up to 90 miles on electric power alone. Also, this was the only car that used regen effect for the braking to put some energy back into the battery, so you didn't need to charge it quite so much. Wait a minute, that feels a bit cheap. Out of the Holy Trinity, the 918 was the least expensive. So the starting price was £700,000. The P1 started at £900,000, whereas the LaFerrari was £1.2 million. Also today, it's the least expensive. You can pick up a used one of these for around £1.3 million. P1's about £1.4 million, and a LaFerrari is £3.4 million. Part of that is to do with scarcity. So there are only 375 P1s made, 710 LaFerraris in total, and 918 918 Spiders, hence the name. If you're wondering why this has 000 on the plaque, it's because it's a pre-production model. If you're lucky enough to get your company to buy you one of these, bizarrely, you pay less benefit in kind than you would for a Porsche 911 Turbo S of the same era, even though that Porsche 911 will cost £125,000. The reason being is that it's an e-hybrid, and so you have a low emission rating of just 72 grams per kilometre. So the benefit in kind on this car in 2014 would be £3,200, compared to £4,200 for a 911 Turbo S 997 generation. Speaking of the 997 Turbo S, buyers of 918 Spiders were offered an exclusive 911 Turbo S inspired by the 918 Spider with these various accents which match the illuminous yellow on this car. Most of them took that offer up. For an extra £100,000, you could get a special Vysak version of the 918 Spider, which had loads more carbon fibre on it and it helped reduce the weight by 40 kilos over the standard car's 1,674 kilos. There's some other upgrades as well. As a result, it posted a lap time of 6 minutes 57 round the Nürburgring. Oh! Ow, that meant it was the fastest production car around the ring at the time. And at the moment, why ring is stinging. Ow. Porsche says this car did 0-60 in 2.6 seconds, but what's the reality? Well, I'm going to try now. Bear in mind that I'm on Michelin Pilot's Walk Cup 2 tyres, and they're not particularly warm, but let's do it anyway. I'm going to use my specialist timing gear. Here we go, reset that. Let's do this. <laughs> Point 
0.05. Now I'm going to try it again. Now I've got a little bit of heat in the tyre, see if it'll do a bit better. Two point eight zero. One more time. Two point seven five. Not quite two point six, but not far off and not bad for coldish tyres. I'll take that. Now, if you want to see how quick this car is over the standing quarter mile, then click on the pop-out banner up there or follow the link in the description below to watch me drag race a 918 Spider against a KTM MotoGP bike with Danny Petroza. Anyway, what's my final verdict on this car? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I think you should just go right ahead and buy it because it's absolutely brilliant. Enough said. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. Let me know what you think of the 918 Spider in the comments below. Is it the best car out of the Holy Trinity? If you want to watch more videos, click on those windows there and then click on that box there to get the car out to sell your car.